This is the story of the River Fergus. The 61 kilometre river that passes through Ennis and its surrounding townlands. Today we'll follow its journey from the Ballyhe Cut to Ballyalla Lake and then on to Clare Abbey where we'll finish our story. Let's start in Temple Maley, north of Ennis. We're looking at the Ballyhe Cut which is a man-made channel that links Clunteen Lake and Ballyalla Lake. In 1857, work finished there and it was able to divert water from Clunteen Lake. More than 80 people worked there every day and they came from Clockley and Ennis, as well as Bearfield, Ina and Ruan. The Ballahe Cut brings us to Ballyalla Lake, which is a shallow lake on the River Fergus to the north of Ennis. It's an important wildlife refuge, being designated as both a special area of conservation and a special protection area for birds by the EU. Its floodplain to the west is home to many types of birds. There's shoveler, widgeon, mallard and gadwall. In fact, many types of birds like to spend their winters at Ballyalla. You'll also notice a reed fringe surrounding the lake as well as the hazel woodland that slopes down to the northern lake shore. Not only do birds and wildlife love it here, but for years Ballyalla has attracted locals who come to swim, fish, kayak and enjoy nature. Leaving Ballyalla Lake, we follow the River Fergus through a narrow channel. The water's more turbulent here, with many insects and fish thriving in this well-oxygenated water. It is also the starting point of the Lower Shannon Special Area of Conservation within the River Fergus. The river flows by Ballyalla Grove behind the Auburn Lodge Hotel and Gort Road Industrial Estate toward the town centre. Now we follow the Fergus under the old West Clare Railway Bridge. Between 1887 and 1961, people took the West Clare Railway across this bridge to travel from Ennis to Kilrush. It took them three hours to make the journey. Compare that with 45 minutes by car today. Back to the river where we see reed fringes on either side of Drodna Gower Bridge. A myriad of insects, fish and nesting birds enjoy life in these reeds. Further back are low-lying fields which act as floodplains when the river floods. They're important habitats for all kinds of wildlife and plants and we need to protect them. The river continues towards town passing Cusack Road Bridge with Skull Crease Dree and the Bishop's Palace on either side. Next we approach the Mill Road Bridge which was built in 1857 and is just near the site of the old mill. To the west end of the bridge is the old red brick building which used to be the mill office. We can also see a sluice system that controls water levels upstream, making sure there's enough water flowing down the fish pass on the opposite side. Fish are attracted here by the flowing waters so that they can swim upstream, bypassing the weir. Downstream from the sluice and mill race, the Fergus picks up speed because there aren't any barriers to slow it down. The Fergus is an important fishery for brown trout, Atlantic salmon and European eel, all to be found in the river. Other species include three-spined stickleback, flounder, stone loach and pike. This area is a special area of conservation for other species, such as otter and three species of lamprey, an ancient eel-like species which suctions onto rocks and other fish. We then pass the Tennis and Badminton Club, which is the oldest club in Ireland. From here, we're also able to see the post office field where all sorts of plants and animals live. Occasionally, the River Fergus floods and you can see what looks like a lake on the post office field. The high flood relief walls on the opposite bank stop the town from flooding. The post office field has a diverse plant community, which attract insects, which in turn attract birds. The azure blue kingfisher loves it here, and of course this is also the otter's playground. 
Another creature that enjoys living in Ennis is the Daubenton's bat, or the waterway bat as it is also known. It snatches insects from the surface of the Fergus. This special skill is called echolocation. Luckily for us, volunteers from Ennis Sub Aqua Club and Clare Civil Defence keep our river clean. They go into it regularly and take out rubbish. Remember that someone else has to pick up our litter even when it ends up in the river. As we continue through Ennis Centre, we pass Harmony Bridge and Club Bridge with its stunning 1916 commemoration sculpture. We then see Steele's Rock where it said that honest Tom Steele sat and dreamed of romance with Miss Matilda Crow. Tom would sit on a rock, Steele's Rock, so he could see her when she passed by. Sadly for him, she never even acknowledged his presence. The river then turns at the courthouse and flows by the county grounds, Cusack Park. A very important riparian woodland inhabits each bank and has an unusual mixture of trees because water levels rise and fall here often. It's been awarded the highest levels of protection because it is so rare. Now we're under Knox's Bridge, where there's a natural weir in the river. This is an excellent spot for angling. We're now passing the local wastewater treatment works which treats the town's sewage and is run by Irish Water. When sewage has been treated or purified, it's put back into the river. Sewage treatment plants are essential in all towns and they must be well looked after so that the River Fergus and other rivers do not become polluted. But we need to play our part by not wasting water and flushing appropriate items only down our toilets and sinks. As we get to the main Ennis to Limerick railway line, the river turns and flows under Quinn Road, passing the old Dora landfill site. Flood control embankments are on each side of the river and these are home to many varieties of reeds and wildlife. We now move out of Ennis towards Clare Castle, where we are about to end our journey at Clare Abbey. Hundreds of years ago, people understood their landscape and knew all the natural high spots that didn't flood, such as Clare Abbey. Founded in 1189, it was used right up to the 17th century. The River Fergus is the lifeblood of our town, so we need to make sure we're doing our best to help it support our rich biodiversity and history. <laughs>